Hey everybody, welcome back to Honda Dash Films. I'm your host, Taylor Tomlin, and this is where the channel you come to learn about photography and all things RC. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time in your busy day to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. Today I'm going to be talking about wedding videos and talking about how to shoot weddings and what essential shots you're going to need and, and what kind of gear, and we're going to get right to that. All right, so before the wedding, make sure you meet with the bride and groom in person. And if that's not possible, make sure you have a detailed phone call instead. Discuss the bride and groom's plans for the day and the style of their wedding. Also make sure you know what the what wedding traditions are the couple, that, that the couple is following. These vary by location, culture, and religion. So discuss anything that might be outside the typical wedding. Add it to the, to the wedding uh, photo checklist and move on. Maybe the couple made their own ceremony decor. Or maybe there's a family friend who's a blood relative, but it's essential to get them in those family photos. Ask a couple if you like to shoot a first look or if they want the traditional look walking down the aisle. During this discussion, it's best to tell the couple how much time to plan for photos. Do this before the schedule is final. I recommend at least an hour for formals between the ceremony and the reception. After you take the photos, it would be a good time to use your wedding photography checklist and cross off the shots that you've done so far. You don't need an exact timeline when you book a wedding months out. About a week or so before the wedding, make sure you have a detailed timeline to work from. The timeline should include everything from when the wedding party gets started, getting ready, to the last event of the reception. You need to communicate with the bride and groom, and you need to make sure you let them know when you'll arrive. And make sure that the schedule includes enough time for the formal photos. Even if you're shooting a wedding for a close friend, get everything down on paper. This includes dates, times, and addresses of the ceremony, reception, and any other locations that might be in that list as well. Be clear on exactly what the bride and groom will receive, whether that's prints or digital photos. This is why having a wedding photographer's checklist is advisable. That way you can show them the list of what the shots you can achieve and what you can get for them in the future. And then they can feel comfortable and they can actually pick and choose which shots that are most important to them. If this is your first wedding, make sure you have the appropriate gear. You don't need like 10 lens kits starting out, but you do need a pen body, a bright zoom lens, or a few prime lenses and a flash. Make sure you have backup so that if the camera breaks down or malfunctions, you can still shoot the wedding. Believe me, having a backup camera is everything. It is essential. So renting, a, renting is also an affordable option. For newbies, you can get a backup camera for the wedding day or even a better lens than the one you already own. You need to make sure you check out the articles online for the best wedding photography uh, gear to use and lenses to, so you feel more informed about that as well. Also make sure you own at least one extra battery and if you're shooting with a mirrorless camera, they have a low shot battery life so you make sure you get at least two extra batteries for those cameras as well. Make sure accessories like flashes have extra batteries as well. Know ahead of time what kind of conditions you'll be shooting in. As in, is it an outdoor wedding at noon where it's really bright out and you really have to turn your aperture really high up? Or a dimly lit church where you have to bump your ISO cra crazy high? Working with an assistant, you might have that assistant covering the shots that you can't get to. Ensure that you have a wedding photography checklist, PDF printed out so that both of you have the necessary shots so you know exactly what you're going to be getting. This ensures that both sides know exactly what they're photographing so that way the photographers aren't photographing the same thing. Having a wedding photography checklist that is printable is the best way. The day before the wedding, make sure you do these things. Make sure you confirm time that you will arrive to the bride. Charge all your batteries. This includes your backups and the batteries inside the backup camera as well. Make sure you clean your lenses so that the spots aren't creating any extra editing, editing time later in post. Confirm that you have all your gear packed include plenty of memory cards that are already formatted and ready for shooting. Make sure you have plenty of batteries as well. If this is your first wedding, shoot the wedding rehearsal too. This, the only, only wedding rehearsal I ever shot actually was my first wedding 
And it was really cool because it helped me to know exactly where to stand and where I could be part of the ceremony and make sure I got the right shots. And also showed me what settings to use to get the best exposure inside the church. So once you've gotten the hang of shooting weddings, shooting the rehearsal really isn't necessary anymore. But it makes a big difference for your first wedding. The wedding day is here. You're stressed out. You're ready to go. You're antsy. A wedding photography checklist can help you make sure you don't forget any must-have shots. This includes the best man, the bride dancing, at table settings, just to name a few of the things you're going to have to capture during this day. So remember to add any shots to the bride and groom request. Make sure those are priority number one and anything outside the usual wedding traditions. The time between the ceremony and the reception is usually a rush. Photograph as much as possible, okay, before the wedding. The order of these shots will vary. This is because of the schedule and how the day unfolds. I usually shoot the detail shots when I have about usually a few moments between getting ready shots. Before the bride gets dressed, photograph the dress by itself. Go look for a scenic spot in the venue, but remember the groom shouldn't see the dress. So find a nice scenic spot for you to photograph the dress with a nice background. Some traditional shots include the finishing touches on the hair and the makeup, or the bride being zipped into her dress. The bride being putting on her shoes and the bride putting on her garter. Placing the veil or jewelry is usually something that someone important to the bride will end up doing that sort of thing, such as a mom. Make sure you photograph them, then placing the veil or help them with the jewelry. Once the bride is fully dressed, photograph her the first time her parents see her dressed or the first time her bridemaids do. When you're filming the grooms and groomsmen getting ready, the traditional shots are like putting ties on, adjusting the cufflinks, putting the shoes on, pulling up the jacket, that sort of thing. Photograph the bride by herself. Remember to use a variety of poses and some length and some close-ups and some wide shots as well. Some of the bouquet, some without, you know, something like that. Include at least one shot where it shows the back of the dress. That's a very important shot. Photograph the bride's side together in several different poses. Again, include variations on both compositions on, on short, close-ups, wide, medium shots. Again, include any other variations. And if there's a flower girl or a junior bridesmaids, be sure to include them in some of the group shots as well. You photograph all the girls together, then you take the bride with each bridesmaid on their own. Photograph the groom by himself. Then get a few different poses and vary your crops and your lengths on that as well for your, for your portraits. Then with the grooms and the groomsmen, you know, photograph the guys together as a large group. Then different, get different poses and different compositions as you're doing this. And then also photograph each uh, groomsman with the groom at a time. Photograph the bride with their parents and the groom with his. If there isn't enough time, do these after the ceremony with the family shots. Detail shots are awesome. I love doing detail shots. It's great getting these little things to put in the video. There's just, you know two or three seconds each. The bride and, and groom put months and months of work into their wedding date, so make sure to photograph the smaller details of that day. These shots can be the items on their own, or they can be worn by the bride or the groom. Now, these are just a few items to, to name a few, but just a little small list is the rings, the bride's shoes, the veil, bridal jewelry, anything borrowed old or blue, the bouquet, the boutonnieres, the wedding invitations, or if they're programs, they, they really make sure you get the wedding invitations and the program because they know they put a lot of thought into those as well. Now, if their driveway car is decorated, make sure you definitely get shots of that as well. And then any other small details the bride and groom have worked on or they ask you specifically to film as well. Now, if the couple's opted for a first look, you'll be photographing the couple's portraits before the ceremony too. So photograph the first time that the groom sees the bride, then photograph a variety of formal poses of the two together. I don't work from a ceremony checklist, actually. I use a schedule to know where I should be standing and when. Then I photograph everything. I mean everything. Getting several angles and composition if there's time. Looking at a wedding photograph checklist takes away my eyes away from the kind of moments that I could miss while, while I'm looking down at the list. So make sure you don't really worry about that. Just know when and where you're supposed to stand. That said, I still do work from a mental must-haves list 
that I've memorized from doing a lot of weddings. Parents and grandparents entering is a huge deal. Don't forget to shoot the mothers lighting the union candles if that's part of the ceremony. If there's a sand ceremony, make sure you're getting the sand before and after as well. The grooms and groomsmen entering, that's a big deal. Make sure you get all of them coming down the aisle. The wedding party processional, including each mem member of the bridal party. Now the bride walking down the aisle is a very, very important shot that you cannot miss. But the groom's reaction to the bride walking down the aisle, that is the big one, okay? This means you have to work very, very quickly. So I usually position myself about three quarters way down the aisle and I use a zoom lens to photograph the bride first entering. Then I turn around and I photograph the groom and then I turn right back over again to the bride. Giving the bride away is another quintessential shot that you need to get. Um, each ceremony item on the, on the schedule. This differs from with each couple. So ensure you have a schedule to know when's happening and when. Now you need to know if there's any musicians or speakers so you can mic them out ahead of time. A wide angle shot of the entire ceremony venue, including the entire audience, it's a good shot to have as well. Watch the audience for potential reaction shots, particularly for the family members in the front two rows. They'll be either laughing or they'll wipe away tears. During the ring exchange, try to use the time as the bride and groom recite, I give you this ring to get multiple perspectives, including close-ups of the hands, one that includes both the bride and groom. Now the kiss, for this essential shot, plan ahead to determine your composition and shoot the image first. Then if the kiss is a long one, use a zoom to vary the composition as well. Now if there's a receiving line, catch a few hugs with family members at the beginning of the receiving line, then go set up any lights for the formals as the receiving line finishes. After the ceremony, family poses on each side. Now ideally, get a list from the bride and groom. This is because every family is different and there may be step relatives. So ask the bride and groom ahead of time to designate a family member to assist you in finding each group. This comes in handy, you know, cause you don't know anybody there. You're not, you wanna make sure that no one gets left out. So you want, what you wanna do is you wanna start with the whole family first. Grandparents, parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, that sort of thing. Then you wanna remove the people from the pose and do just the parents and the siblings, then just the parents. Now you want to take the bride and groom and make sure you get them one with the officiant. That's very important. The bride and groom together in the wedding ceremony venue. You want to make sure the wedding party, you get a, a shot of the wedding party in the ceremony venue. The bride and groom outdoors or in the secondary photo location. Now these are shots most likely to end up blown up by the bride and groom's walls. So therefore get a variety of different poses and, and, and leave out, you know, leave the most time for them as well. Uh, the wedding party outdoors in the second location. Make sure you get them, you know, what you want to do is you want to, this part here, you want to watch for canon moments from the bride and groom and the wedding party interacting while they're setting up for the formal poses, such as walking to the next spot, just they're talking, they're laughing. These are the best time to get the best canon moments. You know, you get close up to the rings on the bride and groom's hands and you make sure you get the signing of the, of the wedding license as well. At the reception, be sure to introduce yourself to the DJ, then ask for a few minutes warning before transitioning from dinner to any other major event. So that way, this is so that you, if not, you know, you're taking a bathroom break or you're messing with microphones and cameras, all of a sudden you start the activities, you, you miss everything. So make sure you have a good time, talk with the DJ beforehand. If the ceremony and reception are at the same location, then you have a few minutes ahead of time to slip and photograph the centerpieces and the cakes before the guests arrive. The cake, before it's cut, make sure you get it shot before it's cut. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that one. Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. Including the full shots and close-up details of the cake. Make sure you get the centerpieces. Make sure you get the wedding party walking in. Make sure you get any toasts, cake cutting, the first dance, the bridal party dance, the father-daughter dance, the mother-son dance, receiving and tossing of the garter, and then you get a shot of the groom with the guests that caught the garter. Make sure you get that. The bouquet toss and a shot of the bride with the person who caught the bouquet. Make sure you get any other special events or games that the couple has planned ahead of time. Make sure you get everyone on the dance floor. That's going to be, this be great shots of the dance floor. Everybody's having fun, letting loose. You don't want, you don't want to watch for canon moments between both guests and the wedding party throughout the night.
Wedding's done. Woo, man. <laughs> oh, man, it's done. You got through it. You feel better? All right. Well, now that this, uh, the hard work's just beginning, actually. So what we want to do is we want to back up your files to at least two different locations, okay? And start editing. I don't care if you get home at 3 o'clock in the morning. You start editing. Keep the bride and groom updated of the editing process. Deliver the final images. Make sure you ask the bride and groom for any online review or encourage them to recommend you to their friends. That's word of mouth is golden. You know, and then make sure you add the best shots to your portfolio as well. Now, shooting your first wedding is nerve-wracking, to say the least. Proper preparation, however, can both calm those nerves and help you get enough shots to fill an entire wedding album. So when I first started shooting weddings, I made sure I watched a lot of videos and I watched a lot of stuff ahead of time so I knew exactly where to be. And it was still nerve-wracking, even though I watched 200 million YouTube videos on how to do it. But you know what? That's good because it keeps me on my toes. It keeps me fresh, it keeps me creative, it keeps me current. You know, and I want—I don't want to get complacent and too comfortable in my spot. So what I do, I love. So anyway, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button right down below, and comment below if you like this video. So anyway, I'm Taylor Tomlin. Have a good day. Have a great day. And remember, photography isn't about great depth of field; it's about great depth of feeling. See ya.